I know I said I'm not really religious, but I do still have a copy of the Bible and it means a lot to me. <laughs> Don't you dare do this to me right now. This song is about boobs, right? <laughs> Thought we were gonna get one video on my channel where I didn't cry. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Ali and today we are doing the unthinkable, ranking every single Jonas Brothers song. <laughs> yeah. If this is your first time seeing me, hi, it's so lovely to meet you. I'm so glad you're here. You should totally subscribe. Basically, I am a massive Jonas Brothers fan. I am a Joe Bro Ho, if you will, or a Jonatic, I think is what we used to go by. Times were rough back then for fandom names. Yeah, basically I've been a Jonas Brothers fan since I was like 12 and this has been by far my highest requested video ever. I wanted to do it earlier this year and then I ended up getting tickets to see them in Vegas and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hold off because I feel like my thoughts and feelings about certain songs might change once I've seen them live and boy did they. So I'm so glad I waited to do this after having had that experience because I can just speak from a more informed place now, you know? I love them so much. I'm so glad they're back together and the fact that they got back together is what still gives me hope for a One Direction reunion one day. I know that's a sensitive topic right now. I'm so sorry, but I believe it can happen because I've seen it. Now, a healthy reminder, two points. Point one, I love all of these songs. Well, most of them. So when I'm ranking today and you're thinking like, oh my God, that's way too harsh. You have to think about it in the bubble of just their world. Their only competition is themselves because if there's anyone else in the competition, they would win by a landslide. So all just a bit of fun. Point two, <laughs> this is not about what is their best song. This is about what is my favorite song. You are welcome to disagree. In fact, I encourage it and I would love to hear, you know, all your thoughts and feelings in the comments, leave your feedback, hate mail, whatever it is, but you do have to plead your case. That's all I ask. You have to tell me why. Alexa, play Tell Me Why by Taylor Swift. I can tell you now, looking at <laughs> this tier list that I made, there's gonna be some bias, okay? I am a nostalgic little bitch, we know this, but it's okay, because I feel like some of you will be too, so you'll get me. I feel like if you like this video, you definitely need to to watch my video ranking every single Taylor Swift song and also every single Hannah Montana song. Those are a lot of fun. I have also had quite a few requests to rank every Harry Styles song. I felt like it was like too close to Harry's house coming out for it to be fair, but now it's been a few months. So I feel like we could do it. If you would like to see me rank Harry's songs, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I think it could be fun. So let me introduce you to today's tiers. First up, we of course have God tier. It is the same in every video because it simply cannot be this music is salvation. Sometimes I struggle to decide if it's worthy of God tier or if it's, you know, just a rung below. So I'm going to use the same system that I used for my Hannah Montana ranking. And that is that to belong in God tier, the song has to be as good as Hurricane by Bridget Mendler and it has to make me feel the same way, you know? So if a song doesn't make it to God tier, that's totally fine. It makes it to change my life. This is for the songs that I'm like, could they go in God tier? I love this song. Then our third tier is Baby Bottle Bop. <laughs> If you know, you know. The songs in this category have got me hands clapping, hip shaking, maybe even heartbreaking. Then we have iPod Shuffle. This is for a song where I'm like, look, if it came on, I'll let it play. I'm not gonna put it on on purpose. And then below that we have, who are you? Wait a minute. Are you? This tier means I've either skipped the song so much that I don't even really know it that well, or if it came on right now, I would skip it. So sorry. Finally, the last tier is why Nick quit. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> the songs that go here hurt me deeply. You all are trash. So to begin, we have the greatest debut album. It's about time. When Lizzo said it's about damn time, she meant this album. The first song we have is Time For Me To Fly. <laughs> Can I just say how much I love little fetus embryo Nick Jonas's voice? God, he had a real kind of Jackson 5 quality about his voice at that time and I love that. <laughs> This is punk. This is music. How many other songs can say that they're on the Aquamarine soundtrack? That's iconic behavior. We have to acknowledge Nick's previous album, Nicholas Jonas, which I adore. If you remember when Liam Payne said that One Direction was really formed around him. Oh God, honey, no. This band was really formed around Nick. He was the one that had the record deal first, was writing songs, and the boys joined in, and thank God they did. That part when Nick says, I will reach, I will rise, makes me feel the way that the Nobody's Perfect bridge does which is just like so inspired and empowered. So I'm gonna put time for me to fly in, change my life. 
because it did and it also changed their life. Next up we have Year 3000. This song was so good that this little indie kind of British band called Busted did a cover of it after the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> I love saying things that I know will anger people. <laughs> I could literally hear you all already scrolling down to the comments to educate me. I'm a Busted fan, don't you worry, I know. I know the origins of that song, I just adore this version too. But you know, if we're talking about covers, like, this is one of the greats. This is one where they really put their own spin on it, made the lyrics more PG friendly, more Disney-ified, and it slapped. It literally outsold Kelly Clarkson. Try to tell me that you can hear these opening notes and not absolutely lose your mind. <laughs> Ready for Nick's jump? Look at these little babies! Oh god, I love them. And with that, year 3000, we have our first God Tier song. I don't think anyone would dispute that. It is immaculate. Then we have One Day at a Time. This... <laughs> I really loved this song as a kid for some reason. I think I just really liked how Nick's voice sounds. I listened to this song again recently and I was like, oh, it's just like me during COVID and I die one day at a time. It's good, is it? I'm gonna put one day at a time in iPod Shuffle. It's not a favorite, but I, I still have respect and love for it in my heart, you know? Then we have six minutes. This song literally invented counting. Six minutes is what five more minutes wishes it had. I only just learned this week that six minutes is actually a cover. It was originally by LFO. That's changed everything. Yeah. Six minutes, LFO, you're on. Stepped onto the dance floor, shaking her hips. Thought I might bust when she licked her lips. Right to jail, right away. Tell me if any of you feel the same, but the beginning of Six Minutes really reminds me of another song. See if you can guess, but then I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Have a think about it. Talk amongst yourselves. Tell me what you think it sounds like. To me, that is identical to... Same intro, just in different fonts. That is, of course, Who Will I Be from Camp Rock. Good news is I love both songs, so can't really go wrong. Six Minutes is one of those songs that I could almost put in God tier, but it just misses the Hurricane by Bridget Mandler hype, and there's another song coming up that I'm like, deserves it more. So Six Minutes is going in, changed my life. Then we have Mandy, the song that kind of started it all. I don't know if it was their first single, but it was definitely like one of their biggest ones. Imagine being Mandy and being like, oh yeah, Sophie Turner married my ex. There's all this talk about, oh, I'm a Joe girl, I'm a Nick girl. To be honest, my favorite Jonas brother is actually Sophie. Now, the most important thing about Mandy is that we got Kev vocals. Love that for him, love that for us. That is just Kevinly, you might say. I'm gonna put Mandy in Change My Life. Some of you will be like, that's a God tier song. It's not to me, but it did change my life. Next, we have You Just Don't Know It. <laughs> So <laughs> this was another favorite of mine as a kid and I'm pondering now, was I okay? Why did I love the slow, emo, sad songs? Now I wouldn't gravitate towards this. I'm gonna put it in iPod Shuffle because when Nick's part comes in, it really picks up. Take it away. things wrong with that song but it's okay next we have what i go to school for again another busted cover clearly the boys were fans the original is about a student teacher relationship the boys heard that and were like no ezra fits you've gotten away with too much we're gonna change that up i actually do really love their version i'm gonna put it in change my life there's gonna be not many songs down the bottom i'm i'm sensing this already um oh well then we have i am what i am a self-confidence anthem honestly i don't care about my haters and if you want to fight me then fight me. I'm gonna put that in Baby Bottle Bob, because it is a bop. Then Underdog, I remember listening to this at age 12, feeling like the most misunderstood person in the whole world, like no one knew what I was going through, except these boys. Don't know what I had going on in my life that I possibly could have felt isolated about. 12 year olds find a way. When they sang, One Day She Will Change the World, I was like, yeah. I will. I was genuinely like, oh my god, they're talking about me. And then Lucas got one and plagiarized them and said this. Brooke Davis is gonna change the world someday. And I'm not sure she even knows it. Because of course he did. <laughs> tier song? I think it might be. It's going in God tier. It's that bitch. Next up we have 705. This song. <laughs> 
where do I begin? Just a little bit about me. I do wish on 1111, but I also wish on 705 because this song is so good. Hearing these opening bars makes me feel amazing. <laughs> Feel all right. <laughs> the lyric dreaming about you makes me feel all right feels like a pg version of waking up beside you i'm a loaded gun by one direction if you get what i mean I was fine, just fine. underdog you're going to change my life 705 absolutely god tier <laughs> Then we have Please Be Mine. Now this song got them their record deal. We have to respect that. This was like definitely a favorite of mine back in the day. The potential was there. The lyrics just aren't as strong, which is fine because it means they've grown since then. I'm gonna put it in iPod Shuffle. Notice how so far there are no songs from this album in the bottom two tiers. It's About Time is really that bitch. Okay, Don't Tell Anyone. Don't Tell Anyone is kind of the they don't know about us <laughs> of this album. <laughs> Yeah, that can, that can go in Who Are You. Okay, hey, we're gonna be all right. You know when you're a kid and you get home from school and Arthur comes on and like the Arthur theme song is playing and it's like, what a wonderful time of day and it like puts you in the best mood. That's the same mood that this song puts me in. If I had to sum up like how I view the world with one Jonas Brothers lyric, it would be you only get one shot. So give thanks for what you got right now. I love that. God to your song. Please tell me if you agree. It it just makes me so happy. Then we have Dear God. I am a little embarrassed to say how much I love this song. As a no longer super religious person, something about this song just does something to me. Um, <laughs> insert the video of me from like four years ago, just shaking my ass to this song. I have to say it, it changed my life. I'm so sorry. I love singing along to this song. I don't know why, it just hits. And that is this album. Now we are up to self-titled Jonas Brothers. Arguably, again, one of the best albums of all time. Up first we have SOS. Hey, in case anyone didn't know, hugs were overrated, just FYI. We have to remember that Joe literally did bleed for this song. <laughs> That obviously changed my life. Okay, fair enough, you caught me. Next we have Hold On. This is just pop punk mastery. I tell you what, it is a good thing that I have a needle phobia because I'm surprised like the second I turned 18, I didn't get when you love someone and they break your heart, don't give up on love, have faith restart, tattooed on my body. I'm so glad, <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't get that tattoo, but also like still would. The boys literally invented rock with this song. It's a god tier song. Yeah, it really is. That's one of those songs that just makes you feel angsty, but also makes you feel like you can do anything. Good night, goodbye. She was fun, loved her when I was younger. I'm gonna put it in iPod Shuffle. Wouldn't turn it off, but like wouldn't put it on as my favorite. Speaking of favorites, next up we have That's Just The Way We Roll. Years and years and years ago, I tweeted something about if I ever heard That's Just The Way We Roll live, I would pee my pants. I just meant that kind of colloquially, like as, a, as an expression. Um, <laughs> let me tell you a little thing about manifesting. That shit is real. Because I then saw the boys at the Wango Tango 2019 iHeartRadio performance. The opening bars played of that song. I was so surprised <laughs> that I did pee my pants a little bit. I feel safe telling that story here. I'm sure we've all been there, right? <laughs> but I needed to tell that story so that you understood just how much this song means to me. It's so good. I'm pretty sure as Jonas fans, we all collectively go feral when we hear this. <laughs> said we are quirky and random and that's just the way we roll and it deserves god tier i freaking love that song so much next we have hello beautiful it is another nile anthem and yeah i mean i say i'm not religious and yet here i am i have the bible literally next to me <laughs> if you've read this chapter you know how i feel hello beautiful i'm gonna put it in who are you because it's just a little bit slow for me i might skip it but like such sentimental value but sentimental value doesn't pay the bills sorry next we have still in love with you <gasps> 
I don't know what you would define this sound as. It's like obviously some some sort of pop, but it has like a funk or like some kind of, I don't know, whatever it is. I love this song. Oh my God, I love this song. Singing all these blues. I'm sorry, that's God tier. I've always loved that song and I will always love that song. Next we have Australia. Now, you can imagine how I felt as an Australian hearing this song, hearing them, you know, sing and confess to me. She won't break my heart because I know she'll be from Australia. She's my dream girl. And then they never even toured here. <laughs> Explain that to me, boys. 16 years since your debut album came out, not a single tour. They'd always be like, oh my God, world tour, world tour. And really they mean America and Europe, don't they? Us down here and poor little New Zealand, forgotten about. Do I forgive them for this? No. So <laughs> Australia, I'm gonna put it in baby bottle bop. Next we have games. I don't even know if I can express this in words, but games is a God tier song and if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. It just is. Love just is. Who sings that? Hilary Duff. Sometimes I just like to test myself. Yeah, games, games is iconic. But you know what? So is when you look me in the eyes. Whoa, that was hot. When I hear when you look me in the eyes, all I can think about now is that Sarah Shower, who's another YouTuber, <laughs> lost her virginity to this song. And I'm like, it is an interesting choice. Probably not a deliberate one. If any of you have also had a first time experience or any, you know, life-changing experience to a Jonas Brothers song, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you also lost your virginity to a Jonas Brothers song. I mean, this song collectively as a fandom, this is almost like our all too well. Like we know that this song hits, it hits different. This album has such a good amount of what I like to call Nick outbursts. It's when he does his like whiny, and I mean that in a good way, yeah, you know, I'll point some more out as we go along, but like when you look me in the eyes, has a good amount of them. And hearing this live is a life-changing experience. Again, see the vlog. Clearly when you look me in the eyes is a God tier song. Is God tier getting too full? There's nothing I can take out. Okay, inseparable. When I say I listen to emo rock, this is what I mean. If you want it too, Okay, yeah, Inseparable changed my life. Inseparable and Underdog are very similar to me. It's that like, no one gets me but you, it's us against the world, teen angst kind of vibes. And I love that. Okay, then we have Just Friends. <laughs> there she goes again. It's cool, we're just friends. Pet peeve that I do have in music is when they change the pronouns, I guess. Like he says, falling in love, just you and me, till the end of time, till I'm on her mind. So it's like, okay, first you were singing it to me, cause it's like falling in love, you and me. And now you've said her, till I'm on her mind. It's like, you're talking about someone else. So I feel like you have to either pick if you're singing it to the person or about the person. Otherwise I just get confused. So I am a sucker for a good friends to lovers trope in real life and in media. Beyond even the sound of this, song. The journey it takes us on, it is so good. This is a Taylor Swift level song. I'm sorry that I keep mentioning her. It's just how my brain works. But like the development that we get with each verse and then the bridge and then like the final chorus with the lyrics change to reflect those changes, illegal. It's cool because we're just friends to then thinking about how we're going to say our vows because now we're more than friends. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Thinking about how we're gonna say our vows As she walks down the aisle Everyone knows it's meant to be yours oh, yeah. Rest in peace me, R.I.P. me <laughs> I died dead I mean, God tier song if ever I heard one <laughs> I need to pick up the pace here. Okay, Hollywood. I love they added this onto the album. It's, you know, the last song on the album and they're like, hey guys, we're signing with Disney now, but we're still gonna be down to earth. Hollywood won't change us. Hollywood Records is the album label that they signed with. I'm gonna put Hollywood in Baby Bottle Bob. And for some reason, Take a Breath wouldn't like load into the system, but I would put that in Change My Life. And now we have a little bit longer. Beginning with BB Good. This is a song that I have to 
admit I did sleep on for quite a while and then they played it live in Vegas and my god did it go off. It doesn't have the most like sophisticated lyrics, it doesn't like build as much but it is a very fun song, we can't deny that. So I'm gonna put it in Baby Bottle Bob. I can hear some of you screaming at me that it's God tier. I'm not reading that. Moving on, we have Burn It Up. When they first recorded Burn It Up and Nick did... <laughs> The rent was due, okay? They needed to put that money down and Nick fully went for it. Now, the rent is no longer due. They are millionaires and they know it. And that is why Nick is lazy and won't sing it for us anymore. He won't sing it live. And I'm like, do you realize that we are paying hundreds of dollars to hear you say that one line that takes one second? <sighs> I hate that boy sometimes. He just loves to watch us suffer. I'm really proud to have given the world so much joy and in fact, Me. But sometimes we all feel a little bit like red dress, you know? I think it's a state of mind in a lot of ways. Red dress! Ah, that's history. <laughs> we have to stand a petty king that writes a song about Miley and then puts Selena in the music video and dates Miley and then dates Selena and then dates Miley again. Miley. And then Miley back with Selena. Thank you, Demi. But and then back this? with Miley. <laughs> Thank you. If social media had been as big as it is now back in those Disney days, I mean, we've seen what happened with Josh, Olivia, and Sabrina. It's the same story. Burning Up is iconic. I'm gonna say, here's the thing. When Nick doesn't sing <laughs> the way he's supposed to, the way God intended, it is a change my life tier song. When he does sing it, which he does on the track, I have to be fair, it's a God tier song. Like as if I wouldn't put Burning Up in God tier, you know? But then we have Shelf. What an amazing song and like what an amazing concept to be like, don't take my heart and put it on the shelf. I'm gonna put shelf in Change My Life. It is just that song. One Man Show. One Man Show is just Nick outburst for like three and a half minutes. I remember as a kid, like not listening to this as much because I was like, what do you mean, Nick? I'm in love with you. <laughs> Why aren't you in love with me too? What do you mean you're a one man show? I'm gonna put it in iPod shuffle because sometimes you just wanna feel like a boss bitch, a boss babe, if you will. Now we're up to love bug. The rainbow lights have come out just in time. Everyone thank Tish and Billy Ray Cyrus for creating Miley Cyrus, which then gave us this song. Without Miley, this song wouldn't exist. Without Miley, would really any of these albums exist? Probably not. This is the song that I had in mind when I said I want to wait and see them live because I think my feelings will change. To be completely honest, before I saw this live, I would have ranked Love Bug in Change My Life. It is iconic and it's iconic for a reason, but it is a very slow song, especially the first like 90% I'd say. For me, I'm just like, okay, get to the fast bit. But then seeing it live... <laughs> It just, it changed me. <laughs> Do I wish the fast bit started earlier? Yes. But maybe it's just teaching me a lesson in patience. Good things are worth waiting for. And that includes this song. I never thought that I'd catch this. That part's fun. It's just not, like if the whole song was that, I'm asleep. But it does build. We gotta give them that. Then we get to this part. Suddenly I forgot how to speak. Now I'm starting to get excited. Hopeless, breathless, baby, can't you see? And then we have. <laughs> We are three minutes in almost with 45 seconds left and this is where it gets freaking good. I'll see you next year, man. Get off that cake! The first night I saw them in Vegas, they didn't play Love Bug, and it felt like something was missing. And that was when I realized Love Bug is a God tier song. It's what she deserves. Now we have Tonight. This album really, I think, is the peak of Nick Outbursts, and I'll show you my favorite. <laughs> think tonight changed my life. <laughs> Can't have you. Okay, this is a slower song than I would normally listen to, but it has one of the best Nick outbursts of all time. To the point where I'm gonna share another embarrassing story for you. Please give this video a thumbs up. When I was younger, I got my cousin to cut one snippet of this song and make it an audio track that was like three minutes long of just this one part repeating. <laughs> I'm gonna play you that part. I'm not even embarrassed about this because like, it still slaps. So yeah, I had a recording on my iPod. It was just dying without your love. And 
I can't say I regret that. I'm putting that in Baby Bottle Bop. Cause like the whole song itself is like, okay, kind of slow, like more iPod shuffle vibes. That part elevates it. Video girl. What is a video girl? Like, <laughs> Do I understand it? I think I thought it was like someone who plays their love interest in a music video, but I don't know if that's what they meant. I'm a video girl. I'm literally making a video right now. <laughs> I am a content creator. I am a YouTuber. I'm an influencer. Were they singing about influencers? I'm gonna put this in an iPod shuffle. They have better. I do love the line, move to LA, got no talent, not even like you want a Miss Teen pageant. It's like, I would take you seriously if you'd at least won a Miss Teen pageant, but like you haven't even done that. So get out. I don't trust her. I don't think she's a good person. And I believe now that, I believe she's somewhere living with deep, deep regret. And that's okay. Pushing Me Away is a great song. I do think Shelf did it better. Shelf is kind of the same vibe. It's like, like you're not giving me enough in the relationship. And so if I'm comparing those two, Shelf did it better. Pushing Me Away is still a baby bottle bub because like it does build. The song really builds. Sorry is going to be, this second verse is just one long Nick outburst. And that's kind of what defines this whole album. Thank you for that, Nicholas. Sorry is gonna be iPod shuffle. I have to start putting some a bit lower. Got me going crazy. I loved this one. Got me going crazy is a baby bottle bop for sure. Okay, now we have a little bit longer. Where my diabetics at out there? This song's for you guys. When he put this out, I genuinely thought he was like dying of diabetes. And every time they would play this on TV, I would get so sad. I um, released the news that I have diabetes um, last year. When Nick was diagnosed with diabetes, it shook us a little bit. In the beginning, it was a little tough for all of us because we were trying to understand it. I can't even comprehend it, how it'd be so hard for him to live with it every day. Nick did almost die for that song, but I don't like put it on to listen to anymore. It's the kind I used to like listen to in the car with my parents, with my headphones in, just like feeling sad about the fact that he was dying. Now I'm gonna put that in iPod shuffle. I'm sorry, diabetics. It's just like a bit sad. Now we are up to Lines, Vines, and Trying Times. What an iconic album name. We begin with World War Three. It is a bold choice to open with World War Three. I've got to say. This song is not Why Nick Quit. It is going to be a skip from me. It is Who Are You? Sorry. But then we have Paranoid. <laughs> The best thing about Paranoid is obviously the bridge. When he said, I'm avoiding the lines, like the lines from Lines, Vines and Trying Times. I love that there are multiple songs on this album that reference the title. I guess the title's referencing the songs. That's fun. I'm gonna put Paranoid in, God, I gotta look at what songs are coming up to compare it to. Paranoid changed my life. Yeah, it did. Then we have Fly With Me. Okay, baby, here we go. love this song so much to the point where like I've almost overplayed it. I feel like if I listen to it too much now, I'm going to ruin it forever because I have listened to this probably a million times. This is peak Nick outbursts, especially <laughs> Try to change the ending, Peter losing Wendy. Taylor Swift is such a Jonas Brothers fan. Wow. <laughs> Nice pipes, Tamika. That sound at the end of the plane taking off is the sound of me flying it up to God tier. Oh my God, what a song. God bless. I always loved Peter Pan. And when they referenced him in that song, I was like, I get it, I get it. Then we have Poison Ivy. The fact that they basically said bitch in this song, well like alluded to it, shook me to the core as a child. Um. What a bitch. And again, like other songs on this list, like most songs that I listen to, the bridge is the best part. I am a slut for a good bridge. Not like those people that like marry bridges, but like I would marry musical bridges if I could. Like the song on its own, it's fine. Now I found out you lie. But then we get to the bridge. Hearing them say between the lines and the tangled vines and the trying times, can't walk away. That is the same way I felt when I was listening to The Last Great American Dynasty and Taylor sang, and then it was bought by me. I was like, <gasps> 
That's it. That's the song. And the whole time I'm listening to that song, I'm just looking forward to the bridge the whole time. Poison Ivy, the song is a baby bottle bop, but the bridge is God tier. Then we have Hey Baby. I'm gonna put Hey Baby in Who Are You? I'm not even gonna play it for you right now because I'm like, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> it's just, it's okay. It's just okay. They've got better. Speaking of they've got better, Before the Storm. You guys know how I feel about Niley. Do I even need to say it? That is a God tier song. Fellow fans, you will know. So Nick and Miley met in 2006, the 11th of June to be exact. And they were together for a while and then they broke up and then they got back together in 2009. And in 2009, in June, she came out on stage and sang Before the Storm with them. And my God, I've never seen <laughs> two people more destined to be together, but also like she was just clearly so still in love with him. So Nick and Miley's anniversary is the 11th of June. More on that later, but Miley and Liam's anniversary is also the 11th of June, apparently. Oh, yeah. Liam and Miley count their anniversary as June 11, 2009, when she started filming the last song. But also June 11, 2009, this photo was taken of Nick and Miley kissing on jet skis. I'm sorry, Liam. <laughs> Nick and Miley were never off the table. With us, it's never off the table. I will always love that song. I will always love them. It's just who I am. Next we have Much Better. Oh my God. From singing about Miley to singing about Taylor Swift. Much Better is the original Thank You Next. And as a Swifty, this was a hard time. Um, <laughs> Taylor's song, Better Than Revenge, is the better song to come out of that breakup. I'm so sorry. I don't remember where I put it in my Taylor Swift ranking video. I hope I put it God tier because it is absolutely God tier to me. Much Better, like good on you, Joe, for having a crack at it. <laughs> it is funny that neither song are about the other person. Like they're not about Joe or Taylor. They're both about Camille. Poor Camille Bell, honestly. When I was in Vegas, they were like, now there's this song that we've been wanting to play. We haven't played it in over a decade. And they're wheeling out the piano. And I'm like, don't you dare do this to me right now. Don't you dare. Um, and they did. <laughs> and Joe changed the lyrics. So he sang, now I'm cool with superstars and all the tears on her guitar. And something inside of me in that moment healed. I didn't know that I needed that, but I did. And now she sends their baby's presents. Get a rip for now I'm cool with superstars. All the tears on her guitar. Not Joe, you do sound a little bit bitter. I'm not sure if you realize how that's coming off, but Writing a song about someone and your breakup does sound a bit bitter, just so you know. But Much Better For Me is so fun to sing because I love both of them. It did change my life, but not as much as Better Than Revenge. So I'm gonna put it in Baby Bottle Bop. Then we have What Did I Do To Your Heart? And for that, I need to just quickly change. That's better. Now I'm ready for this country jamboree. <laughs> The country music industry was quaking the day this song came out. <laughs> so this album came out in 2009. So that means Taylor Swift heard this song and was like, oh my God, they've got a country. I need to switch it up and do pop punk like they've been doing. And then she put out Speak Now. So guys, thank you so much for writing that song and then giving me my favorite album of all time. I have to respect that. Did I break it? If you listen to that song and you don't do the claps, I mean, you're lying. <laughs> what I do to your heart, you have to be in the mood for it. I'm putting that on iPod shuffle. I wouldn't put it on, but I wouldn't turn it off. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep this hat on for a little bit. Black Keys, do I like this song? Yes. Do I know what it's about? No, <laughs> not really. Don't let them get that is such a simple line and yet so beautiful. I feel like there must be fans out there that have that tattooed. Don't let them get inside your head. That's beautiful. And you know what? Sometimes the fight is better black and white. I think what they're talking about in that line is when shows like Pretty Little Liars and One Tree Hill do a black and white episode. And <laughs> those are not my favorite episodes. I'm gonna put Black Keys in iPod Shuffle. Again, I would never turn that off necessarily, but it's like, it's a bit slow for my vibe. As you can see, looking at that here and also the one below it. There are quite a few slow songs. Next we have Don't Charge Me For The Crime. This song is the reason that the bottom tier exists. <laughs> this is life in this world. 
one, what's your emergency? The verdict came in and it said I was guilty. I looked at the judge, hey, America built me. Somebody find and bring him back, because I will be pressing charges. Boys, I will charge you for the crime of making this song and making me listen to it. And making me defend you as a fan for releasing this song. Hearing Joe sing the females in the crowd, that's hard to rebound from. The word females, I hate to say it, misogynistic. That's not okay. And this song is going in why Nick quit. That's why he broke up the band and I would too. Then we have Turn Right. Every time I turn right or tell someone else to turn right, I think of this song. It is very slow, but the end has this. To see you at the finish line. Yeah, Turn Right is gonna be Who Are You? I just think I don't listen to that one enough. Next we have Don't Speak. Again, an okay song, but the bridge. It's so amazing and I would play it again and again and again and again. There are just lines, vines, and trying times throughout this whole album, and I love that. I'm gonna put Don't Speak in Baby Bottle Bop. Then we have Keep It Real. Was this song on a soundtrack? Was this on like Jonas or Jonas LA? It just really sounds like a <laughs> TV show theme song. It has, you know, kid vibes. Was it the soundtrack for like Jonas Brothers Living the Dream or something like that? Or maybe it was in the 3D concert movie. Keep it real. This song is very much giving Hollywood, being like, hey, yes, we're famous celebrities now, but who's to say that we won't keep it real? I'm gonna put that in, who are you? It's just not my taste. <laughs> now we are up to V. I'm taking this off because this is like a somber moment. This was the album that was being made before the band broke up. And I'm gonna do a speed round on these because I have been talking for so long. Pom poms. I'm gonna say what we're all thinking. This song is about boobs, right? <laughs> hey, like I love boobs as much as the next guy. I don't love this song. I'm gonna put pom-poms in Why Nick Quit. Honestly, I am being a little bit salty because of like them breaking up the band <laughs> and not to be that guy that's like, oh, I preferred their earlier stuff, but I did. Then we have Wedding Bells. Now, again, please everyone bring out your textbook. Refer to page 148, chapter name, Prince Charming. As we discussed earlier, Nick and Miley's anniversary is June 11th. At this point, when this song came out, Liam and Miley are engaged. My heart was broken because I'm like, Niley is no more. Miley's in love. Nick probably couldn't care less. And then, then he sings this song live. My Niley heart had hope again. Ceremony set the tune. I will never get over that song. I will never get over Niley. Wedding Bells is God tier. If that song had been released, I think the world would be on a different path and maybe Nick and Miley would have ended up together. Will I ever give up on them? No, I won't. <laughs> Mr. Nice Guy, I literally don't remember that song, so it has to go in Who Are You. Neon, Neon was okay. Neon could go in iPod Shuffle. Like this album wasn't my favorite. First Time, I really don't like First Time. I don't know what I have against it. I also don't love the music video. I'm gonna put that in Skip, because I honestly would skip it. That's Who Are You. Let's Go, Don't Remember You. That's going in Who Are You. I did like Carmen. They opened for them when I saw them the first time ever at Jones Beach, New Jersey. Maybe that was like a month before they broke up. That is a horrifying thought to think about. If anyone else was at that performance, 2013 Jones Beach, there was like a thunderstorm and it was an outdoor theater. It was very cool. I was there. What do I mean? This is also the reason for that bottom tier. Imagine putting out Love Bug and then a song like this. <laughs> Hear like solo Nick's career coming through full pelt in this part, and I do fully blame him for this song. I think that's like Nick's vibes, and I hate it. <laughs> I don't like this part, but then it gets worse. That backing noise, it's like, sounds like shoes, the original YouTube video. These shoes suck. It just gets worse. Yeah. 
that chorus makes me think, okay, music is dead. Maybe the worst song in the entire world. Not good. Lyrically, lost. That band is not the band that I once loved. <laughs> How is that the Jonas Brothers that wrote, please be mine? I, I just can't. I mean, what do I mean? Bottom tier. That's why Nick quit and that's why I quit on them. I didn't and I never would, but I should. Then we have Don't Say. Why don't I remember that song? <laughs> okay, I, that's going in Who Are You? The World. Now, when I read The World, I actually think of the Demi Lovato song, which was an absolute banger. Oh, I remember, I do like this chorus. <laughs> It's a baby bottle bop. Uh, would I put it on? Yeah, I really like that chorus. I don't love the verse, but the chorus saves it. And then we have found. This one lyric in found, when Nick says, I could marry that smile you're wearing, and I just might. <sighs> Be still my beating heart. Can you tell I used to be a Nick girl? That, <laughs> that just got me. Hearing them sing about alcohol on this album, wild. I can marry that smile you're wearing. I can't stop drooling. Found is gonna be a baby bottle bob. Just for that line alone, honestly, Nick still got a hold on me. Okay, now we're up to happiness begins. I know this is a controversial opinion, I know that, but I don't like sucker. And when they came back after years of being broken up and being like the band is back together and sucker was the lead single, I was like, oh. Okay, it's not a bad song. It's just very, very different from like their original stuff. And if we're looking at my tier, you're seeing the first two albums are clearly my favorites. And that was kind of like a pop punk angsty kind of vibe. And this is like a very Ryan Tedder, very, you know, it's a radio friendly song. There's just something about the sound of it <laughs> I don't like. So Sucker for me is going in, oh my God, it's actually going in Who Are You? Because I do skip it if it comes on. I'm sorry, like I just don't like it. I'm not trying to be quirky and different for not liking their big single. Cause that's literally their biggest single of all time. I think it's like their only number one. I just don't like it. But next we have Cool. So Cool was their second single from the comeback. And thank God, because this song just blessed me. And I love how many references there are in this song to just like Sophie and their old stuff. Oh, so good. And oh my God, when they performed this in Vegas, screaming at the top of my lungs, now that we made it, how complicated was last year? I really thought we were gonna get one video on my channel where I didn't cry, but here we are. Yeah, after like everything that we had been through, that meant a lot, that, I felt that, you know, I really felt that. I comb my hair like an old school scene, standing there with the red dress on you. Is it me or am I just having a good year? I wasn't gonna put this in God tier, but hearing that just now, it's a God tier song. It is. It just means so much to me. And I don't know if any other fans feel like this, but all the references to their like previous stuff and things they've been through and like red dress, it, it was healing. And like having watched Chasing Happiness and seeing all the work they went through and like the difficult conversations and the resentment and the pain to then be able to like look back on their career and feel good about it and reference their previous stuff. And oh, this is just a good song. It makes me so happy. Oh, I feel like Amazing, and I would play it again and again and again and again. I grew up, I wanna be just like me. But lately, I've been feeling so. Now we have Only Human, and again, I can feel the judgment coming through when I'm about to say this. I do not like this song, and I'm not kidding like I was with All Too Well. Something about this song makes me hate it. <laughs> is it the sound or is it the lyrics? that it's that sound i just don't like it i don't know why i think maybe because this song has the vibes of like coercing someone to love you it's only human you know that it's real so why would you fight try to deny the way that you feel oh babe you can't fool me your body's got other plans so stop pretending you're shy Ugh. i'm sorry but if someone like said that to me and they're like stop pretending you're shy your body's got other plans like your body wants to be with me ew yuck i'm sorry i hate that i think that's honestly a big part of the reason i don't like this song it's just 
just like, I'm hearing you say no, but like your body's telling me yes. Only human is going in why Nick quit. And I'm feeling harsh today. Like other times it could go in who are you, but I do know that I don't like it. And I'm sorry because I know a lot of people do. I hate it. <laughs> then we have I Believe. This album is kind of their lover. Like it's like, we're all married. We're all blissfully in love. Sorry that you can't relate. <laughs> and this song I Believe is very much that. I'm putting I Believe in Who Are You? Because I would skip it. I'm so sorry. Then we have Used To Be. Now that is a song. The line from this that absolutely kills me. And like when I first heard it, I was like, oh, you just thought you could do better. So do better. Yeah, you used to be the one I love. Say you want to talk how you been. Baby, I don't even know ya. A moment to acknowledge Joseph Adam Jonas's vocal progression over the years. My God, when he went on the lie detector test and said that he has the best range, he wasn't lying. And neither am I when I say I agree. I'm so proud. You just thought you could do better. Do better. 10 out of 10. Yep. Yep, she ate that up. Spend night time with a new friend. Yeah, it used to be changed my life. That's a freaking bop. Then we have every single time. What is there to say about a song that opens with Mr. Misdemeanor? <laughs> he really was trying to be like a rap R&B king, wasn't he? Mr. Misdemeanor. Earlier when I mentioned like how shocking it was to hear them speaking about alcohol for the first time was nothing compared to when I heard this line. Like it was yesterday and yesterday. Smoke it up. Just, I can't take that seriously. Every single time is gonna be, who are you? Don't throw it away, however. Environmentalist kings, they said, let's recycle. Don't throw it away. If you thought their activism ended with send it on, they are still out here fighting the good fight, reminding you to reduce, reuse, recycle, Rihanna. Reduce, reuse, recycle, Rihanna. Also the line, don't forget to think of me, reminds me of Thomas J from My Girl. Veda, what? What do you think of me? For what? Or if we don't get to marry Mr. Bixler, I guess. <sighs> song that changed my life <laughs> then we have love her no matter the fight you know she's always right <laughs> it's true we are always right but when i listen to this song i don't it's going in who are you happy when i'm sad i'm gonna put that in baby bottle bop then we have trust <sighs> This just comes back to that same issue I have with the lyrics. The lyrics are like, I don't trust myself when I'm around you. I fully know it's just a song. It just gives me the ick. You can really hear it in Nick's voice here. He's giving that Nick Jonas jealous energy. Take me back to when you were my only. We would take it down. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just don't listen to it. It's going in Who Are You? I don't like how many I have from this album down there, but I'm not going to lie to you guys, okay? I just... Then we have Strangers, and that changes everything. When I hear this song, I think about how Sophie and Joe met, and when he left her apartment, she cried because she knew she'd met like the man she was gonna marry. I mean, if I met Joe Jonas, I would have the exact same thought and reaction. Strangers changed my life, yeah. Hesitate, beautiful song. Absolutely adore that Joe wrote this for Sophie and like what it means. It's just not one that I gravitate towards because it is slower and like, you know, like it's, it's very emotional. I have to be in the mood for it. I'm gonna put it in Who Are You? Then we have Roller coaster. This song, I can literally remember the moment that I heard a very small snippet of it in the trailer for Chasing Happiness, and I was like, What is that song? That's the song that ha is gonna change my life. And from that moment, it has been inked on my heart. I love it so much. I don't think there is a song that like gets me more hype than this. It was fun when we were young and now we're older. immediately god tier anytime they reference their earlier lives and like early days i'm gonna cry it just gets me gets me similarly comeback the fact that it's called comeback and like they're making their comeback they knew what they were doing to me i know it's not like for the fans but it feels like it is because it's like come back to me and i'll come back to you it's like we're there for you still and you came back to us comeback is god tier now we have the soundtrack for Jonas LA season two. I will never forget Nick saying that Jonas LA season two was a mistake. Like season one was kind of a mistake. Season two gave us unlimited bangers. First up, we have Feeling Alive. This is a pretty good Nick outburst. This is a night. Yeah. This is a night. Feeling Alive. 
changed my life. I didn't think I would put it there, but I was listening to all of these yesterday to kind of prepare myself and see how I felt. I could not stop moving and grooving to that song. So it has to go there. Then we have LA Baby. Again, this whole album is peak Nick outbursts and that's why I love it. LA Baby changed my life. It is such a fun song. Then we have Your Biggest Fan. This song is the introducing me of this album and of the Jonas Brothers cinematic universe. Him sitting down and singing this song to me or to you, I suppose, and just me falling in love. Nick and China Ann McLean put their entire bodies and hearts and souls into this song. We did get Nick rapping and saying shorty but I don't mind. A summer like no other, you my LA baby. No, I never even Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing. And I'm starting to believe you could be. Baby, I'm your biggest fan. This is also the Wattpad dream come to life. It's your favorite singer slash celebrity singing to you and being like, I know you're the fan. Like you could be at the show and know every word, but it's you who makes me sing. <laughs> Whoever wrote this song, whether it was like the Jonas LA team or Nick, they knew what they were doing and they really should have sang this live more often because like, that's what every girl wants to hear, myself included. This song alone is better than the entire Starstruck movie. And that's saying something. That is a God tier song. That could almost be God tier all on its own. Like a whole other tier it is so good. I'm gonna try and power through these. Critical, I'm gonna put in, oh, it's pretty good, Baby Bottle Bob. Hey you. Mmm, iPod shuffle. Things will never be the same. Who are you? Fall. It is a bit slow for my taste. I'm gonna put it in who are you? I do like it though. Doesn't matter, I've put it there. Too late. Summer rain. Actually no, fall is going to iPod shuffle. Summer rain is going to who are you? Yeah. Drive? Who are you? Don't remember you. Invisible? Oh, this was kind of a bomb. Yeah, invisible, iPod shuffle. Make it right. <laughs> kind of sounds like a graduation song. It's going in Who Are You? Chilling in the summertime. That's kind of a bop. Lyrically, it's not that strong. It kind of sounds like a song you had to write for your primary school like project for class. Um, but it's not bad. I'm trying to make excuses for it. It's going in Who Are You? These are just the ones that I don't listen to. Set this party off, however. This might be one of their most underrated songs of all time. She pulls up in her daddy's car. Part of the song, immaculate, incredible. We do need to talk about the lyrics though, because this second verse, it's a bit dicey. She looked at me like I was crazy. I could tell she was in, cause she didn't say no right away. So she said no, but not at the beginning. So he's like, well, you didn't say no at the beginning. She told me she would think about it. Girls like that, they gotta keep you guessing. Boys, come on, that line. I could tell she was in, cause she didn't say no right away. Girls like that, they gotta Absolutely hate that. When I listen to it now, I just kind of block that out and sing around it and like put my blinders on, I guess. And I'll forgive them for that because it is a bop. I'm putting it in God tier, despite those questionable lyrics that are very not great. I do love that song. I'm blinded by the Nick outburst of this song. Is God tier. Now we are up to the bonus Jonas round. Bonus Jonas! I'm gonna try and power through these. I'm so sorry, it's such a long video. Let's start with Dance Until Tomorrow. Can I hear that song in my head right now? No. So it's gonna be Who Are You? Meet You in Paris, however, I really love and I wish that had been like properly released. I think it would have done well. I'm gonna put that in Change My Life. I, I'm in a real Meet You in Paris mood lately. Remember this? Oh my God. I mean, I just said it. It's a god tier. Used to pray for a moment just like this. There's a fire in your eyes, I can't freeze it. Baby, we ain't gonna wanna remember this. We ain't gonna wanna remember this. Baby, we ain't gonna wanna remember this. Used to pray for a moment just like this. Oh, we gonna remember, remember, remember. Baby, we ain't gonna wanna remember this. That should have been their comeback single. I'm so sorry, but to hear that after years of nothing would have 
ended my life and it would have been worth it. That also should have been what they ended the shows with. They instead ended with Leave Before You Love Me, which is the next song I'm gonna talk about. Before Vegas, I wasn't so keen on this song. They ended both nights with this and I was like, interesting choice. I get it, it's because you're leaving, like leaving us. But I would have ended with like Love Bug or I mean, even Sucker, I would have expected more than this. Remember, this would have been freaking incredible. But the thing that changed this song for me is Joe doing this. This song would have been like an iPod shuffle, honestly. Now, changed my life. Thank you, Joe. Then we have Green Light, iPod shuffle. Next we have Infatuation. This was the song they released partially in Japanese, which was so cool of them to do. And boy, I was singing along to this song with no idea what I was saying, still don't know, but it is a great song. That's a baby bottle bob. Then we have Who's In Your Head. I'm gonna put it in iPod Shuffle. It's just not my style. Then we have Bounce. Bounce, just bounce. Let me see that body bounce. My arms are so fly and my jeans are so tight that I make these people bounce. There's only one place bounce can go, and that is God tier. <laughs> God, I hope some people remember that song. Okay, then we have Kung Fu Grip. Do I want to tell this story? I think I need to because I need to explain like why it will be placed where it is. This was my favorite song when I was, you know, 13 or whenever it came out to the point where I met a boy and I thought he was my friend and we were talking about favorite songs and I shared this and then he learned this and played it for me in front of a big group of people and put my name in the song and I've never felt more embarrassed in my entire life. Parents were there and like it was a big group and I just wanted to melt and fall to the floor. And so I can't hear this song now without hearing it in that kid's voice <laughs> and that might have ruined the song for me a little bit so I'm gonna put it in iPod shuffle because I've got to be in the right mood to be able to put myself through that then we have Jersey this song is like a lullaby almost like a lullaby to the fans one of my favorite lyrics that they have ever written is this it rained hard in the garden stayed and we shot up like we second verse makes me giggle a bit Hollywood, I like the battle this song feels like if Chasing Happiness had like an anthem and a song to sum up everything that we learned about the boys, everything they shared and everything they went through, it's this. And for that, Jersey is absolutely God tier. It makes me sob. So proud of them. Then we have Move On. Move On to me is very similar to I Am What I Am. My favorite lyric is definitely get over it. Your friends are so much hotter. I died. That's gonna be a, that's, that changed my life. Yeah. When you need a song like that, it hits the spot. Then we have What A Man Gotta Do. I feel like I love the music video for this more than I love the actual song. Like the whole grace energy, amazing. That is a baby bottle bop. Yeah. Out of this world, this was another favorite of mine. It's very much McFly Stargirl vibes, which was like another one of my favorite songs. The fact that this isn't on Spotify haunts me. Hearing Nick sing Thank You Gravity like that changed something in me. You know what's funny? That's a God tier song. I have just realized that it's, it's completely God tier. Anything about space, out of this world, fly with me, time for me to fly, star girl. Anything about being up in the atmosphere, give it to me, I want it. Lonely is gonna be a baby bottle bob. Baby bottle pop <laughs> has to be a baby bottle bob. It's the reason for the tier. That was iconic. Beautiful world. This song is very similar to Hey, We're Gonna Be Alright. I love that in the verse, he's like, I don't wanna watch the news. It's so sad. Like all the things that are happening are just so depressing. And then the chorus is like, it's a beautiful world. This is a song about blissful ignorance. I feel like this song could have been on Summerland, like on the Summerland soundtrack. It has that energy. It is kind of a bop. Um, I'm putting it in baby bottle bop. Yeah, it's a good time. Then we have Girl of My Dreams. As far as all the Christmas songs go, I really did enjoy this one. Did it change my life? No. I'm going to put it in iPod shuffle. I want to be like you. The opening line is, now I'm the king of the swingers. 
Joe is clearly involved in the Utah Mormon swing community. Good for him. I probably wouldn't put this song on, but I'm not going to turn it off either. It's iPod Shuffle. Poor Unfortunate Souls, same thing. Like it's just a Disney soundtrack song and that's okay. And then we have Hello Goodbye. So the Jonas Brothers wrote this song and then it was covered by another like British boy band, I think, the Beatles. Um, I don't really know that much about them, but like good for them. Look, <laughs> it's probably going to actually be Why Nick Quit for me. I don't love that cover. It's just not the best. Live to party. Live to party for me is the same as keep it real and set this party off and we got the party with us. I don't gravitate towards those kind of songs. We got to live to party, bust a move, everybody's in the groove, tell the DJ to play my song. iPod shuffle. I could get down to that. Five more minutes. Like I said, five more minutes wishes it had what six minutes has. The beat and the melodies I love. It's just the lyrics makes it sound like, how do I say this without getting demonetized? <laughs> it's like they're in bed with you and they're like, no, please, like, just give me five more minutes. I, I promise I can do better. <laughs> I know that's not what it's about, but it's how it makes me feel. So I have to put it in why Nick quit. Finally, we have Mercy. This is from the Space Jam soundtrack. And again, it just feels very Nick Jonas-esque, which is fine. Just not my personal, like, favorite. I'm going to put it in iPod Shuffle. Yeah, and then these ones down the bottom are just the accidental repeats. Wait, have I done Kids of the Future? Kids of the Future was actually a very fun song. I'm gonna put that in Baby Bottle Bob. I feel pretty happy with that. When I make these videos, I try and make the tears kind of as even as possible. Otherwise they would literally just all be in God tier and I would have none like down the bottom. So I feel like I did a pretty good job at making those consistent. Obviously there's a few more in God tier because they're my boys, but I'm happy with that. Similarly to on my Taylor Swift ranking video, I would love to hear from you guys your God tier song and like your bottom song from each album. If you have the time, if you'd like to share it in the comments, I love hearing other people's favorites. So like your favorite and your least favorite from each album. So I hope you guys liked this video. It was truly so hard to try and sort these. And I now have about three and a half hours of footage to sort through. It's gonna take me a week to edit. So please give this video a thumbs up. It helps me so much and I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and feel free to let me know like what other videos you would like to see from me. If you're following me on Instagram, we love talking about it over there. So I'll leave that link below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had fun and I will see you next time. Bye.